midnight. And now in the company of Gareth Sega and Gas. Gareth, welcome to the programme again, mate. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, a real pleasure to have you here. And uh, you. yeah, mysteriously, and Gas, would you like <laughs> to tell everybody who the guests are? Well, we've got Dan Connolly on bass, uh, Ian Holford on drums, and Davy Henderson on vocals. Fabulous, okay. And um, before we get into the new album and various other things, and in fact, before we draw Davy into the conversation, um, we just need to um, sadly have a conversation about two of your friends and colleagues who passed away. Um, you've had such a, a, a rough ride of it over the last few months. So, of course, uh, John Waddington of the pop group passed away, and I didn't know John, but I did know Mark, not as well as you, but Mark, <laughs> Mark Stewart. I was, I was coming home from uh, having a great afternoon out with a mate in town. I was in a really good mood. And then the message came through that Mark Stewart had passed away. Yeah. And, I, you know, I only met Mark on a few occasions, but I, I, he made such an impression on me, I absolutely loved the no, guy. No, he was uh, full, of, uh, full of life. There's no question about that, you know, in every way. Uh, uh, it was... Uh, completely out of the blue is passing and um i actually did the first ever gig he ever did with him in some little youth club outside of bristol um when we were 17 and then i did the last ever gig with him again in bristol in a club called the cube that gideon might know um and it yep. was a improvised jazz gig <laughs> uh and we started doing a couple of pop group tunes and that went fine and then Lee Ronaldo from Sonic Youth and uh, about eight young, exciting British Bristol improvisers came on stage and started honking away. And Mark just stood there going, I hate jazz. I hate jazz. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So controversial to the end. So, uh, yeah, you know, and, and of course, very humorous. So, yeah, no, in, a colossal loss. Yeah. Colossal. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've i told this story before, but when the Mark came in first, so you did two uh, pop group sessions with us, but he came in first in a solo style. And I said to Michelle, never met Mark before. I'd seen the pop group playing yeah. naturally, but I said, I don't know what Mark's going to be like. I know his music's <laughs> amazing, but I expect he might, be, he might be very political. He might be very serious. He might not even want to engage in conversation. <laughs> well, he was, he was joking nonstop. That's what she said last night. That's what she said last <laughs> night. I mean, it was one of his many catchphrases, but... One of the most the, the engaging. Catch phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a, a, a force of nature and a huge yeah. loss. And so, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, mate. Yes, no, 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 no. It's, there's loads of stuff that will come out that still, you know, shows what great talent he was. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see and hear that. Uh, we look forward to that. And also very fond memories of the noise show you did uh, as part of the Six Music oh, Festival. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah no, with, that with... was very loud with Jeff Barrow mixing, wasn't it? Yeah, at the control. <laughs> I think Jeff has said it was too loud. And, uh, <laughs> so, some may agree with that. But it Ian was... was playing at that gig. Yeah, uh, it was quite yeah, something yeah. to witness. <laughs> um, now, Maelstrom in the Bear Garden. My, uh -huh. my emphasis, in the Bear Garden, rather the Bear, the bear Garden. <laughs> or should I not get too involved in Don't the different get spellings too involved. of Bear? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, actually, the... Um, that name is, believe it or not, from a group of friends that had a group that played on a lineup with the pop group Nico, Linton Quasi Johnson, and Cabri Voltaire at the Electric Ballroom. So that's a pretty like they they uh, Melstrom in the Bear Garden were the first band on. So I asked permission to use the title for the album. Is it just because you wanted to use that for an album at some point? Or well, did no, it no. Quite amusingly, that that the. the um, one of the guys in the band went on naked at the electric ballroom and Nico was just running around going, is he on acid? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, no, he was just from Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that explains it. Uh, normal for Bristol, yeah, I don't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of... Um, uh, Bristol and also a, another area we have in common, which is uh, northwest London. Uh, we live in, I, I, I live in the rougher part of Kensal Green. Uh, but um, it has echoes in this in this record, not least because in the in the uh, soon to be top of the hit parade. If there's any justice, uh, they're playing craft work in the cafe. Have I got in the, the coffee shop? In yeah. the coffee shop, yeah. So um, have you uh, let it be known? This is literally about craft work playing in the coffee shop, isn't it? Well, uh, it's it's just poetical. It's just <laughs> poetical, and it, uh, craft work just seemed like the right sort of um, band to sum up the sort of whole gastro, you know, cappuccino society. Really, that um, you know, something that was so great has been sort of um, taken and just sort of is used as background music now, which is um, 
sort of a bit of a pity, really. The first time I um, I saw Bowie was in 1976 at Wembley, and he had a famous opening act on that tour the, yeah. the, the White Lights tour as such uh, Station to Station 76 and he had Un Chien Andalou uh, was a film that played oh, right. before yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. but as we didn't know at the time but, uh, the music that he was playing was Kraftwerk and so <laughs> you know he, before yes, the cafes yes. Bowie was doing it he, yeah. said, the, he said he stole that part <laughs> of the play uh, 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 elsewhere on the record well, there's, there's lots to enjoy on this record yeah. and, well done with it. And, and Cricklewood gets a mention as well yeah. uh, Cricklewood I mean I think Strummer wrote a bit about Cricklewood and recorded a song about Wilsdon. Uh, I think the goodies were big on their Cricklewood as well. well. If, if you listen to the Cricklewood song, you do end up going down Shoot Up Hill into Kilburn High Road. Oh, yeah. So you do arrive in Kilburn. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole gruesome journey. As you tend to do, going that way. Um, um, we should bring Davy in now, should we not? Yeah, stand up, Davy. <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi. So, Davy, um, how are you doing? You know? <laughs> I'm good. good to see you, it's Davey. nice to see you're still wearing that old bikini. Yeah. And nothing else, good in. How can you put up? <laughs> Crocheted. All part Crocheted of the contract. Bikini. And those lovely furry mules from that uh, Fenella Fudge. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, yeah, beyond all that, great to see you again. Lovely to see you. And of course, I mean, you've been Both. kind of, um, you know, I mean, you've, you absconded from this program a while ago because you've not been making many records in a in a style not for records. No, no, you know, no. you've still, not been to see us, have you? Not, still making up tunes, but um, ach, I don't know. There's too many records out there, as we were discussing earlier. There's just so much going on. I'd, I'd personally. I don't know how to disseminate my information anymore if it's worth putting records out. Sometimes I just think it's good to have the ideas in your head and leave it at that. It's economical and environmentally friendly yeah. and quite radical as well. <laughs> but also quite radical. I mean, with Sexual Objects, you, of course, released the album, Marshmallow. Yeah. One copy of it. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah. So that that was to bring the sort of excitement back into putting a release out was the previous album uh, which was a collection of Sob's tracks uh, which was released on the Hamburg label Auf Geladen und Bereit I think um, it took about four years to sell 500 copies and right. that was quite disappointing sort of I didn't realise that until uh we were supporting the primals. I think you delivered the drum kit. You are a great That's Mark. drum roadie, baby. Well right done. on. Okay. Well done, uh, Mark. There you go. And our friend in Hamburg sent over 40 copies of Cucumber, the album. And it had sort of been five years since it was released. I was quite shocked and disappointed to realise that there were so many left after uh, such a long time. So... With the next album, I thought, let's just do one. Do one, sell it, and then and whoever got it, it yeah. owned it. Yeah, and, yeah. The and then they released it and sold 300, uh, <laughs> or made 300 of them. I don't know if it sold. I'm sure it did. Okay, then. Are we ready to roll? We're, yeah. we're going yeah. to have three numbers, are we not, from here? Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, what are you doing, and in what order, please? Uh, the Johnny Bristol Flu, then I'm milking it, man, I'm cowed, and then finishing with Ignite Me, the latest single. <laughs> <laughs> 